Now, 30th shloka. Sadi Bhuta Di Daivam This is the ending shloka. Sadi Bhuta Di Daivam Sadi Yagnam Jaya Vidu Prayan Kale Bichimam Te Vidu Ryukta Jayadasam Those people who understand what is Sadi Bhut, those people which, who understand what is Sadi Yagin, these people at the time of death, they get entry and are united in me in the end. What he says here, Prayanakali. Prayanakali, at the, at the time of death, they, they get entry in me. Abhinogutta commentates upon at the time of death, you should not know that at the time of death they, they, they get entry in me. It is only when, when they practice this in their lifetime, then at the time of death also they will, they will do the same thing. Kim Janma Sevaya, those people who will, who say to people, what is the use of thinking of Lord Shiva from your birth to death? death? Why should not think him at the time of death? That time we'll think, think him and get moksha. If, if those people who say this, what shall I tell them? Teshnam, Teshnam, Tushnim Bhavyeva Shobana. For to them, I have no words to tell them, what are you barking? Get Shiva. Now, conclusion of this Shroka chapter. So, Tam Bhagavato Bhaktir. Ahita kalpa manjari, the bhakti, the devotion of Parabhairava. If you have possessed that devotion of Parabhairava, you understand that you have got kalpa lata. Kalpa lata is that lata, that creeper in heaven. Whatever you ask, it gives, it bestows to you. It is called Parijat, Parijat Manjari. Parijat Manjari. There is that in, the, in heaven, in particular heaven, there is Parijat man, man, Manjari. You go and ask what you need, it will be bestowed to you. Whatever you think, but you need money, it will come. You need anything you need, it will come. And you need God consciousness to come. This Kalpa Manjari. And in the same way, the real Kalpa Manjari is devotion towards Bhairava. This is real, real Kalpa Manjari. It will give you the success of entering in Parabhairava state in the end. Sadhike cha samuchitam yena sham paraparipuriya. And all desires are shunned, and they are success, successfully uh, taken inside the state of Parabhairava in the end. Shri Mahamaya Shurachari Vari Rajanak Abhinavu Supadu Virchati Shri Mad Bhagavadi Dar Sangre Saptamulya, seventh chapter finished. We have widescreen. We said thank you very much. <laughs> Powerful. I, I, I remember about 15 years ago, um, through my whole life, I, I, I believed in God so deeply, but I never um, prayed for myself. I prayed for my parents, for people around the world, all of that. And I was going through a really heavy situation. And I remember um, crying out Swamiji's name for help. And it, and it came almost instantly and it just blew me away. 
not, not, you know, it, I guess, cause also it was time and it, it changed my life and brought me on this path of spirituality, but it's, it's so powerful where you feel it with every cell of your body asking for guidance or help or whatever it is in this mm. life from the highest being from the highest being mm. i think that having you know being at that moment where it's just it's just it's crying out you know in desperation or just crying out and total agony is right. um, just please help me guide mm. me I can't do this on my own. I always thought I could do it on my own and I had control of it. <laughs> and then it was, and, and it's just since then been so much more fruitful mm. to feel that guide and to feel that lifting and to feel that, yeah, all of it. I, th I think there's a verse that Swami, <laughs> the, um, Swami uh, translates in one of the unpublished uh, texts, which will come out eventually. He says that where, uh, where, that's how God sometimes elevates people when they reach that zenith, that point of so much suffering that there's no one else that they can call out to but God. And mm -hmm. God in their own way says it doesn't matter whether they're a Christian or a Hindu mm -hmm. or a Muslim or anything like that. Everybody gets to that point where they, they, they cry to a, a greater power that, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't even know who you are, but help me. You yeah. know, it, uh, yeah. I think everyone's had those experiences and that's when the God within each of us, we can say doesn't wake up. They're always awake, but, uh, and people have great transformations Then the rest of their life is different. Mm. It's the start for many on the spiritual path, on a true spiritual path, because they realize there's something going on. It's a breakthrough. Yeah. Swamiji said, even, even atheists, when they're in a bad situation and they're scared and they need help, will ask for God. Mm, that's help. Mm. Yeah, it's high. <clears throat> Yeah, that was Alice's question. What about prayer? But prayer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. prayer. Oof. Prayer and, and gratitude and and just touching just 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 like in we talk about in Kashmir Shaivism all through the day, <clears throat> watching your breath is part of that and, and just bringing in as much as possible through the day, morning, night of connection to God. And that's through prayer, that's through gratitude, that's through asking for guidance, that's through watching the breath. I mean, it all kind of threads in together, right? Mm -hmm. And I wanted to say, I am so sorry. I don't think the three of them know, only Claudia knows. Um, on the Zoom thing this morning, I clicked a button and I clicked the wrong button. So if you didn't receive a reminder um, <laughs> and you figured it out on your own, it was me, it wasn't anybody else. So sorry about that. But we will have the recording where you can watch the beginning 10, 20 minutes if you missed it. Okay, so let's see what questions we have here. Well, there's one I can read from here that um, okay, Alice is asking, what is Sadi Bhutta and that Sadi um, Yagya? Um, Sadi is a Sanskrit word. Uh, it basically means a, a good intellectual grasping of, of things that you're, you, 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 you have a clear understanding. So um, uh, Bhuti means nature, you know, the, the elements that you have a clear understanding of what's going on and Yagya, we've already went through that chapter on what Yagya really is and Yagya is what we're doing all the time. When we eat, we're doing a Yagya, when we go, out, when we're working, we're doing a Yagya because everything is being offered through our senses back to ourself, back to that, that aspect uh, within our own nature. And if you notice, I mean, if you, if you recognize that that's actually what you're doing, that everything is an offering to God, that's yeah. powerful. Yeah. And, and in the first part of this, Swamiji said an uh, interesting thing where Krishna says, he says, I know, I know every, everybody, I know every being, and I know their past, I know their present, and I know their future. And, and, but they don't know me. He said, because they're caught up, they're asking so many things from all the things I've created, but very few are asking directly from me. And it's, it's, it's a great mystery in Kashmir Shaivism because uh, Swamiji keeps pointing out through all the texts over the years that I've read, he keeps pointing out that wherever you are, God consciousness is there. And we, we keep thinking we travel, we go here and there in our daily life, we we might get on an airplane and go somewhere. We think we're taking ourselves, but actually what we're doing, we're moving through an ocean of God consciousness. 
and we keep focusing on all the differentiation, but that underlying ocean of, of, of our self is what we're moving through. You know, we're, we're, we're continually going here and there. We're looking through these eyes and through these senses. We're looking for joy in the world. And we're actually that consciousness. We're like fish in the water and we're not feeling the water. <laughs> it's, it's, it's there everywhere. Mm. And the, this universe is just a coagulated form of that. So uh, it just came up when, when he talked about that in that verse. So there's a question here, and then I would love us to end with each of you um, sharing what it was like to go early in the morning for Swamiji's meditation on his birthday when he was in Samadhi in your own words of what it was like for you or what you saw so that people that were not able to be there many years ago could get a taste of what that once a year morning meditation was like where we were able to be in the presence of Swamiji. I think it would be a nice way of adding, I mean, ending this. Oh, the lunar birthday would be, uh, we'd be invited to come to the ashram and it'd be early in the morning. <clears throat> what is early in the morning? What we, sunrise, just like, before, before sunrise. Before sunrise, yeah. early in the morning. Yeah, four or five. And it was morning. chilly because of that time of the year. It was like really early. chilly because it Sometimes. was May in, in, the, in the mountains in, the, in Himalayas. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and there would be Swamiji, he would be sitting and uh, and he would be in Samadhi and and they would, and so all, you're, you're so you're actually experiencing Swamiji and in, in that sitting in that state of, of of God consciousness. I mean, which he was already in, but I mean, in the state of, of that state, uh, it, it, which you never saw him sitting in that state of a Samadhi like that. And it was just it was just shining for me. It was just uh, it was ineffable. It just it was a, it beyond beyond description, but at the same time, just it, just a wonder. So, yeah. what would you do? Because we were there for hours. So we, what would you do? We would sit and meditate. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then sometimes at the end when he'd come out of Samadhi, what would you do? Sometimes. Well, sometimes the people would uh, be, uh, would ask if they could sing or read a verse or something yeah. or you have a poem they wrote or yeah. make some presentation. I did that one time, I remember. Right. And, uh, and that would go on for some time and then Swamiji would begin to... Uh, as he became out of Samadhi, it took time. I mean, who would, and of course, he put so many garlands on him. I don't know if we have any pictures of him. Yeah, no, we're going to show a picture yeah. at the end. Um, and then tomorrow, if you're going to join us for the Absolutely. birthday puja, we're going to be sharing um, many of the pictures from his life as well as from the um, yeah. from the birthday and him in Samadhi. Um, so what about you, Mom? What is it? What was it like for you? Describe the event yes. in detail. It was it was beautiful. You know, we'd walk through the door. Someone would um, open the door, unlock the door, and then we would walk through and find a place to sit. And the first time um, we were there, I found a chair kind of behind Swamiji, and I sat there and meditated. And um, and it was just really blissful. And then you know, sometimes I'd open my eyes and I'd see that some of the um, devotees would be taking off some of the garlands because they said it gets so heavy, you know, these beautiful garlands they would put on, but, mm. you know. And they would cover, start covering his face because yes. there were so many. Mm. So yeah. many, yes. Yeah. And, and he was definitely in Samadhi because there's the, the, he would be sitting and it's like a rock basically. And they just put, it's, they may as well have been putting these garlands, masses of garlands on a statue. Mm -hmm. And on occasions, they, you know, they didn't look at the garlands, people made them, but they might be an ant or something, and it would just crawl up and crawl all over Swamiji's <laughs> nose or crawl around his eyes, or a bug. He was he didn't he, move. He, didn't move. Yeah. he was just gone in, in that state of samadhi and um you know. <laughs> and it was really quiet. Right. And there'd be about a hundred or so people, right, sitting around, remember? Mm -hmm. yes. It was a little dark. Yeah. And he was just sitting there just glowing. Mm -hmm. Glowing is right. And then when it was time for him to come out or when he decided to come out, I don't know how it works. He, he would just, it would just take um, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you know, just to come out slowly. Mm -hmm. He would open his eyes a little and then close them again. And it was very beautiful. It was a... And he expected, he because that's the one time a year that you actually saw Swamiji in a in cushion meditation. 
as Alice once called it, sitting quietly. Otherwise, he was always active outside of his room. He was always doing things. He was in that state of Parabhairava, but he wasn't in that internal state of Samadhi, which he would, wanted to share with everybody, and he wanted everybody to meditate. And there's a very strange incident, or funny incident, that happened. Um, it used to be very, you know, uh, somebody's very uncommercial, so he expected that when he was there, three or 400 people might get in there and they would all sitting quietly and meditating and absorbing that, that grace and that feeling. So one time a devotee asked Swamiji, can, I, can we um, film the birthday? Can we film it? And what Swamiji thought he meant was, can we film the, uh, you know, the, the, after the meditation, after the samadhi? So while Swamiji was in Samadhi, a man came in with a big camera and he was sitting there. And of course, when devotees saw a camera, people automatically, they're smiling at the camera. <laughs> and he, this man, Swamiji was totally in Samadhi. And by the time Swamiji was coming out, the man organizing a little film crew that he said, hey, go away, Swamiji's coming out of Samadhi now. About a week later, they made a little movie out of it. And they said, Swamiji, would you like to see a movie of the birthday? So everybody was so excited. They all got up into the satsang hall. Everyone was sitting around. They had a television camera set up. And Swamiji, the man wanted to denote a television set. And Swamiji didn't know that at the time. He put up this big screen. We've got to remember, this is in the 80s. And they started to show this film. And there's Swamiji. It starts off beautiful. Swamiji in Samadhi just sitting. And devotees putting flowers. And then everybody kind of sitting. And then the camera pans around. And Swamiji sees everybody not meditating. He sees watching them. The he sees them all watching the camera, and it goes on for about five or ten minutes. And and Swamiji's sitting there looking at the screen. There's about a hundred devotees behind him, and he's watching. And I was I was sitting just to his left, and he stood up, <laughs> and grabbed his chair, and he dragged the chair over to beside the screen, and he sat down next to the screen and he looked at everybody. The film was still going on and nobody could work out what he was doing. And he sat there and he just sat for five minutes, looking back at everybody, looking at either him or the screen. And it became very obvious that he wasn't happy that people weren't meditating while he was in Samadhi. And everybody got a little, the man, the man came up Everyone got that feeling. It went through the whole crowd. Oh my God, you know, we were, we were, who do we look at now? The screen or Swamiji? <laughs> and then the man who had it, he was very embarrassed. He came up and he turned, he turned off the camera. Swamiji sat there. And then he said, Swamiji, I, I want to leave this television set here in the ashram. And Swamiji looked just very, didn't make him feel bad. He said, no, no, no. He says, you take this with you. You keep this in your home. This is an ashram. And it was a huge lesson. The very next birthday, nobody blinked. <laughs> there were no, everybody just sat quietly. And I think it was just a lesson that he wanted to teach people that meditation is the most important. It's not having yourself on camera. On, yeah, on camera. Yeah. Thank you for that. Sarvata Sarva Sarvibhyo Namaste